This is the Franchise Basketball Insider, presented by Massengale Eye Care, Oklahoma City's leading eye care provider since 1989. Call 631 2020. You've got several guys on your roster right now who are possible meetings this summer. There's unrest in Brazil, there's the Zika virus. What's, is there any sort of conversation you're having with those guys about participation? Yeah, I mean, those are personal decisions for them. Um, and, um, you know, we've always been really supportive of USA Basketball, we've always been supportive of our players' wishes in that respect. And, um, you know, it, I don't want to speak for them because I don't know exactly where they are, but, you know, we'll pick those conversations up as they get closer to training camp and, um, and be supportive of, of what, whatever they decide. So I think about uh, at the end of Game 7, watching guys walk up the ramp and Dion and Ennis in particular, this is their first playoff run. Yeah. They both seem to take it really hard, the loss. Did you learn something about them that maybe only the playoffs can tell you about those guys? in terms? Because they, they each had some kind of rocky relationships with the team that they left. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's kind of two parts to that question. Um, you know, I think, number one, I'll start with the kind of the back part of it. Um, you know, I think one thing is, is, is one thing we've always tried not to do is judge other people. Um, based on, you know, their experiences other places or what other people might have said about them. Um, we saw both Dion and Ennis as um, players that we felt um, we could uh, acquire and, you know, maybe help in our environment grow and develop. You know, both of them are, you know, not 24, I think 24 or younger. Um, so their best basketball is in front of them. Um, sometimes people haven't been put in those situations. You don't know how they're going to react. But um, you know, one thing about both of them is um, they're 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 both pretty tough guys, and um, they're uh, pretty rugged guys. And I thought, um, you know, as I talked about before, like development is a process. It's not an event, and they have to go through these different things um, throughout the season, as the whole team did quite frankly. Um, but I'm really happy for both of them. Um, I think both of them showed that they can be a part of winning, um, that uh, they'll make sacrifices in order to um, you know, be a part of that. And um, I'm just really pleased for both of them that they, they had the opportunity, they capitalized on it, because they both really bought into what it is we were trying to ask them to do through the season. And um, I'm excited that they were able to see um, some some results as a result of that. Do you feel good about bringing Dion back? Um, again, like we've been through these situations in the past. Um, I never want to speculate uh, on on how free agency will go. Um, the only thing I could tell you is it generally bodes well when the player is wanting to to be back. Um, anytime you have the opportunity to have, you know. Uh, mutual you know uh, goal that's always a positive uh, I do think that uh, in his case um, you know I think the odds are are, are are more likely in the event that we're working in partnership I think it becomes more challenging and more difficult in the event of it becoming an offer sheet type situation but we don't have the answers you know I can't predict the future I just I'm happy for Dion I think he's um, Working toward, uh, you know, realizing his potential, and I'm happy for him. Yeah, Anthony Morrow, you know, he's not guaranteed uh, up until July. Do you think you expect him back next season? Uh, you know, we have a, we have a date on that contract, but um, the way I always look at, at non guaranteed contracts or things of that nature um, is I until there there's no reason to do anything. You know what I'm saying? It's not an option or an early termination option for a player. There's no action taken, necessary to be taken. And we, we really enjoy having Amo with us. He's been fantastic. I would say one thing about Anthony that is really undervalued or underappreciated is I don't know how many guys. There's people that can shoot the ball well for a couple years in a row. But this is a guy that really has been an exceptionally consistent high-level shooter for a majority of his career. That's really hard to do. That's, you know, he's been on different teams, different situations, different coaching staffs, played with different players. Um, he, he really is a craftsman. He really is a craftsman. And um, obviously, um, you know, uh, someone that has helped us, you know, get to where we are. Sam, with continuity being so important to this franchise, was there anything that surprised you about the way this season folded up? 
Yeah, I mean, listen, I, as I said before, I wish I could uh, tell you that I, I could see these types of things taking place. Um, I, you know, I mean, a lot of things surprise, surprise me through the year, um, some good and, and some not good. Um, but I think if I had a look at the season, I'd say um, we really executed on what we tried to do at the beginning of the year which was really try to embrace the season as it unfolded for us, not, you know, looking be, you know, not looking behind us, not looking in front of us, but really, really embracing what was happening, how we dealt with it, uh, making sure we were staying, you know, the course, um, and really trusting the work that we were putting in. Again, this is Billy's first season, so a lot of things were firsts and making sure that there's a foundation in place that could be built upon, not just for this season or the postseason, but for many years. And uh, I think, you know, he was able to get a lot of that done. Um, I thought our players were fantastic sticking to that. And really, as I said earlier, discovering more about themselves and um, by the end of the season, really having something to say and uh, as a team of, of men. I'm really proud about that. It was a really, really enjoyable guys, uh, group of guys to be around. Um, and it was fun watching them develop. It really was. Sam, first for, for Russell being first team all NBA. Um, obviously, last year was a strange year for him with all the injuries, and he kind of had to carry the load. How did you see him evolve after? I mean, that could have really stunted him or helped him. How did you sort of see that all evolve into what we saw this year? Jimmy, I'm sorry. I'm make sure I understand the question, Jenny. So, like, so. Just the success he enjoyed last year. Yeah, but he was playing without so many of the guys that he was with this season. Right. Obviously, it was a whole different integration. Right. So, how did you see last year benefiting him? How did you see him evolve this year? Oh, well, I mean, I, every year I've been around this guy, <laughs> he's he's improved. Um, I wish I could tell you that in um, you know June of two thousand and eight, uh, we could have forecasted that this guy was going to be a first team all NBA you know Hall of Fame level player um, the truth of the matter is we couldn't have done that um, I do think that um, you know credit to the group of people that um, uh, evaluated him during that period of time Troy you know, uh, Weaver most namely um, but one thing we really did lock in on was we felt like this player was going to get the most out of whatever attributes that they had because of what was inside the jersey. Um, and we didn't realize quite how deep the reservoir of uh, potential was probably, um, but we felt like he was going to drain it, you know, uh, of whatever was there because of how he is wired. And I think Russell, like, he's going to be successful if, if, he, if he wasn't um, – uh, you know, born to, to, to with the talents physically to play NBA basketball, and he was, um, you know, going to law school, he'd be a great lawyer. If he was going to med medical school, I'd want him working with me. Like, he, he, he's just, he's a high-achieving individual, and those are the types of people we've always been attracted to here. Um, you know, we always say we hire people, not positions, uh, we're looking for high potential individuals in, in everything we do, whether it's the head coach, uh, the starting point guard, or the intern, you know, that's starting with us for the first time. And I just think Russ is a, he, he's a force of nature, you know, and not just from an athletic standpoint. Um, and uh, we're so fortunate that we have him as a part of the organization. He's been, uh, he, he, he's been a big part of the propulsive uh, evolution of the Thunder into, you know, uh, from 2008 until now. Do you watch your finals? Where, where's the concern level with Mitch McGarry, you know, in his career path two years in? Sure. Um, well, obviously, you know, Mitch didn't have the year that um, I think he wanted to have. Um, it's funny, you know, so many of these things are nuanced. Uh, he, was, uh, he was, he had a great camp. If you remember, they were playing Minnesota in the first preseason game. He was excellent. Um, it was almost like he was playing in um, 
his first preseason game in Denver the year before his rookie year when he got injured. He was playing great in Minnesota. We went to Memphis. He was playing great. And then Matt Barnes uh, concussed him. And he lost about four weeks, I think, or three and a half weeks of training camp. And I think that's challenging with a uh, new coaching staff and with a team that's integrating a lot of new players. And um, I thought that that really set him back. Um, with all that being said, the thing about McGarry that we like is in our grouping of bigs, he is pretty unique. Um, and there's a diversity amongst the different you know, big players that we have. I think with Mitch, I think what you're getting is a guy who can really handle the ball. Uh, he's a really good passer. And I think in time, he's going to be a pretty proficient three-point shooter at his size. So um, we need him to have a good summer. We need to help him with that. Um, I feel badly he got so far behind and then had a hard time getting back because of just the momentum of the season. But um, he's, he's, um, he's, a, he's a pretty unique talent, and we have to continue to work with him to kind of hone it and allow it to be as consistent as possible. This will be the last question. Players often say after tough playoff loss, they don't watch the playoffs. I don't know if I believe that, but they right. say that. Do you watch the finals? Are yeah, I, I haven't um, answered that question, Myron. Like, I've been with my son during those periods, bath time a lot of times. <laughs> um, that or trying to get him to go to bed, which the, the, the third game might start by the time we get him to, to bed tonight. Um, but... Uh, uh, you know, one of the things I think uh, sometimes I like to do is I like to watch games, maybe not while they're taking place, but you can always go back, you know, and in today's world, technology, you can go back and watch them later. Um, and I, I think sometimes that's more helpful. Um, so I'll get around to seeing those, but it's not so much a, uh, like, you can't bear to watch it um, because, again, we have so much respect for the Warriors. They're, they're a great team, and they're a great organization. And uh, we were fortunate to play three great organizations during this postseason, Dallas, you know, and, and San Antonio, and Golden State. And I think that's how you get better yourselves. Um, we tip our cap to them. They were fantastic. Um, we wish them well. And, um, you know, we'll watch those games and try to learn from them um, the best we can. But at the same time, you know, once you get done with these seasons, um, you know, you have to you have to kind of recalibrate and make sure you're taking care of uh, everything else that's that's much more important. And uh, I've I've tried to do that. Thank you, Sam. All right. Thank, Thank you, guys. You.